the interesting thing about this set of cuts, and this probably isn't new, but it really struck me this time. They used to not release anybody who was injured, and that has changed. Kurt Stallion was out with a wrist injury, and they cut him. Uh, Bollywood Boys, I actually forget which one, but one of them was out with a dislocated shoulder. They cut them. Uh, There might have been some others here that were out injured that they cut, but at this point it's like, if we don't want you, you're out of here. Uh, I believe Arya Daivari was on vacation. They cut him during vacation. That was nice. And uh, I think that's the majority. Like, if you look at it, Everrise, uh, they sort of, I mean, they did a squash job on NXT this week. But, I mean, Fandango and Tyler Breeze, uh, they were doing a storyline in NXT. Killian Dane was doing a storyline in NXT. Uh, Arturo Huas, actually, I believe, was injured. And that's why he was out of action. And uh, it was brought to my attention... That uh, remember they had that women's evolution, and it was all about you know serious uh, women's wrestling and and this and that and blah blah blah. Well, soon as uh, Ronda Rousey announced that she was pregnant, which meant that she was not coming back anytime soon. Horse women cut. Uh, Shayna Baszler feuding with a doll. All of this goofiness and wackiness. And uh, I had many people point out to me that, you know, if Ronda were still around, a lot of this stuff probably wouldn't have been happening. But she's not around, so there you go. That's the list as of right now. And, of course, if you uh, listen to Observer Live today, we also talked about uh, Kenise Mobley, who was the writer that did the podcast, where she talked about how she knew nothing about wrestling, didn't know Bobby Lashley's name. Um, I don't know if I could say she was bragging about it, but, I mean... You know, she was pointing out she knew nothing, and uh, the next day she gets fired after uh, talk of this podcast gets out, and it was kind of interesting because I was on our board, and most everybody is just looking at the how ridiculous it is that, you know, WWE is, is embarrassed that it gets out that they hired someone with no knowledge of wrestling, even though she's hardly the first, and they did it, and like, how is any of this her fault? And then I did see a couple of people that were like, well, you know, she shouldn't have talked about this on a podcast. And it's like, why not? They hired her. They're the ones that said, you don't need to know anything about wrestling. So if she wants to go on a podcast and say, I don't know anything about wrestling, how is that her problem? So anyway, I know you've got things to say about all of this land, so let's do it. I was beginning to wonder if you were going to let me talk on this show or not. Eh, you know how it is. Sometimes you have to, <laughs> sometimes you have to play you that Semper roll. Vivi role sometime. Just ramble on for 10 minutes. You know, it, it obviously it sucks for those who got cut. It never It's never a good thing to lose your job. But, you know, the thing that amazes me, I don't know if amaze is the right word, but, you know, we've talked about how no one is specifically a draw and so forth. It's like, yes, there's a lot of talented people here, but it's not like it's going to be detrimental to their product. Like, for the most part, they're talent that aren't being used, and those who are aren't being used to their full potential. So those that get mad at the company, it's like, I understand them making the cuts. Yeah, it sucks for the talent, but I think the the thing that I find frustrating maybe is, like, why aren't we telling stories to get rid of these people? Like, you know, we talk all the time about honoring stipulations. It's like, um, what's his name? I, I had to look him up to see even who he was. I didn't know he was even employed, the gray guy. Um, August Gray. August Gray. It's like he shared, because I guess he's on 205 Live tonight, and he joked, it's like, this match has turned into a loser leave town match. And it's like, why not build up to, like, if you decide you're not going to use the guy, it's like, why not do a couple week angle where he, you know, actually does, you know, have to lose and leave town? Or at least if you had someone new that you wanted to get over, Commander Aziz, you know what I mean? Have him actually injure and put people out and, and at least use the release of the talent. Because, again, like the last time I saw Tyler Breeze, it's like he beat Imperium got laid out and put under their their banner and it's like they're gone it's like could we not have finished this program up and given 
you know, uh, give an Imperium the big win and maybe do the this place isn't big enough for the two of us and run them off to at least, A, maximize their value on the way out, perhaps establish um, stipulations that you could honor because they're not going to be back, at least for the foreseeable future. And it would just give me as a viewer a satisfying conclusion to a story. So I, I think that's a real shame that these programs aren't at least wrapped up and send people on their way for a satisfying conclusion. And again, obviously, it, it sucks if you get released. But I, I think, too, and this is one of the things that struck me the most is... You well, know, actually, I, before you get to that, before you get to that, let me just address what you just said right there. The reason they don't do this, Lance, is because there's no forward planning or anything of that nature when it comes to these releases. Like, one day they wake up, and it's like, we got to cut some people, and they just cut them! I mean, I talked about on Observer Live today, they shot a main event angle on SmackDown with Aleister Black, and then they cut him. They, they shot the angle with Fandango and Imperium, and then they cut them. I don't even think two days ago they had any idea who they were cutting. But, but my, You're right. They but should my, do that. But, but the they point don't. Is, but the point is, it's like, let's use you and I for an example. It's like, if you decided today you're sick of my goddamn show and you're going to cut me, you could, for the sake of making it interesting, go, you know what? I've decided to cut Lance. We'll wrap up, we'll do eight more shows, we'll start getting into a bit of a feud or whatever else, and it's like, we'll wrap it up, and we'll tell a story. And again, whether you tell me now, it's like, yep, we're wrapping you up, you're done on this day. And then we do the program and I do business on the way out, like professionals always have in the past. And, and to get some value out of it. So, you know, if you, if you woke up this morning and decided you were going to release Fandango... It's not like you couldn't have decided, okay, we're going to release these guys. We'll do four more weeks of television and then send them on their way. And and I think, too, like, you know, they're getting paid for their 90 days. It's like there's no reason why you can't use them. And I find it impossible to believe that talent wouldn't be professional enough to still give their all and work hard in their wrapping up because obviously they're going to want to put their best foot forward as a resume for wherever they go next. And I think too, I think for the most part, wrestlers have a great pride in their work and want to look good. So especially now, like you said, if they do in fact release people, if they get hurt, you don't have to worry about the, you know, you know, Tyler breeze blows his knee out in the four weeks wrapping up the program. And then it's like, well, shit, now we can't release. We pay him for another year. Now, again, the likelihood of that happening is very, very slim, but I, I just think you could decide that you're going to wrap up. You know, they, they used to in the past, you know what I mean? It's like if Ric Flair is going to end his run in WWE and go back to WCW, which he did however many years ago, it's like, you wrap them up and it's like I'd, I'd like to see that wrapped up process for the sake of enjoyment for the audience so that things just don't do, like again tyler uh tyler not tyler um uh, alistair uh, black is a prime example it's like he just started an angle and it was just like wow he's gone and it, it's it's jarring for us as a fan and if we were invested in oh man he's back and it's like oh shit where again it was what it was Big E that he kicked wasn't it i think it was yeah. It's like Big E's a, a, a guy that I would invest with heavily. It's like, have him do a four-week program with Aleister Black and beat him clean and send him on his way. It's like, give Big E that big, you know, momentum coming out of it. It's, it's like, you know, they always want to protect the people that lose. It's like, you got someone here that you don't need to protect if he's going to lose because you're sending him on his way. Let them do a good program. And again, I, I find it impossible to leave, believe that even if Black knew this was his last four weeks, he wouldn't want to put on his best work to show everybody th how good he is moving forward. And I, I think on the moving forward, this is what I was going to get to before you know you took over last time. About, boy, a year ago, maybe two years ago now, remember when everyone was saying how, man, the indies are really suffering because AEW and WWE are signing up all the talent, and you know there was a period where indies were just phenomenal and so full of talent and great shows, and there was that, man, indies are really going to be hurting. It's like, well, 
indies are coming back and it's like there's a lot of talent out there again i think we could have another real solid hopefully fingers crossed indie boom coming with a lot of really talented people wanting to go out and you know flex their creative chops and really show their value and what they can be when they're allowed to uh represent themselves better so i i think especially you know i see all the the fan outrage on twitter for releases it's like if you want to support these people go out and support your local indies that book these guys and show everybody that uh they can get over they can have a following and and the wrestling business can have another indie boom as well as a major league boom mjf now has a cryptocurrency yes I have never purchased a cryptocurrency in my life. I bought one hundred dollars of MJF coin. All right, and I'm watching it in like in in two minutes. It's gone up like five bucks, ten bucks. I had to put in another hundred and fifty bucks, and all throughout the day I've been watching it. It's kind of addictive. I'm sure it this, is. This this money growing thing. Yeah. There are weekly awards, so basically this would be like dividends. So all of the people that have purchased this uh, MGF coin, they're all in like this big pool. And then I don't even understand how this works, but like awards are given out and you're given a portion uh, depending on how much of this MGF coin that you have. My dividends right now, if this is accurate, I am over $3,000 right now for my $250 investment. Wow. I know I've made more on this than Cameron Grimes made on GameStop. Sure. I am, in fact, going to the moon with this MJF coin here. I don't know how long it'll last. I mean, for, actually, it's going to last forever because I don't even know how to get the money back. I don't know how to get my money out. <laughs> you couldn't cash out if you wanted to. You don't appear to be able to get the cash back. Oh, so, that, that seems like a major bucket. Well, I mean, system. there's a way, I'm sure. It's like you got to. Are you? Well, I've been told you have to convert it to this other thing. And then once it's converted to the other thing, then you can convert it to another thing. And then you can like, eh, there's, but it can be done is the point. But it's easier. To but I don't know there. how. It's easier to just never look at it again. If you enjoy these videos for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full length editions of the Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.